guys how are you all doing welcome back to my channel once again my name is chatley if you're a new subscriber you are welcome and if you're a returning subscriber welcome all the same so in today's video i'm going to be telling you guys about how my phone almost got stolen guys and the reason why i'm giving this story is because they're probably out there still trying to rob other people and so i just felt um i just felt it in my spirit to like share this story maybe if someone is out there and maybe if you get to experience something similar to what i did you might be able to handle it better than my situation and also guys i realized that the actions i took in whatever happened is kind of very risky and that's why i want to tell like i want to try and take bring this out there so that people will be able to know and just be just be safe out there because Man, I've been hearing a lot of things in the news and a lot of bad news, especially. So I just felt like I should also play my part by trying to tell this story so that whoever is out there will be able to avoid going through the same situation as I did. I was fortunate enough to come out without having my phone stolen or anything like that. But um, yeah, and side note, guys, I just want to say this is like my second time. Um recording this video so if this doesn't work then it wasn't meant to be because i have been trying like trying to record this video like i tried the first time started editing was some clips were just not not it and then when i finally edited i had a problem like some of my clips got corrupted so here we are so you guys as was, as um, the story starts so um three before then, like two months before then, I was in my hostel with my, my sister and we were just outside just because there was nothing to do. That was during this lockdown period. And two guys walked to our hostel. When they walked to our hostel, they walked to us because we were the only ones that were outside. And they asked for someone's name. I've forgotten who the person is, but they asked they asked for a, a lady. And I was like, okay, I don't know. You would have to call her because I really, I know the faces of the people in my hostel, but I don't know all their names. Especially, I'm not someone that's really good with keeping names, so I was like, um, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are referring to, but you have to um, call the person and um, you have to call the person so that the person can come out. So he was like, oh, okay. Then he asked me a question that, do you do modeling or anything? And I'm like, no, I don't do modeling. So he was like, yeah, um, there's a boutique um, that they're looking for people to just model their outfit for them and then they pay 96 96 96 97 000 shillings that what he said that will i be interested he was like oh can he have my number so that he can talk to me like he can call me and further explain more so i was like okay so i gave him my number after giving him my number my sister was like no you wouldn't have done that because she wasn't just comfortable with the whole situation so um at around eight that day i was in my room and i was just going through uh, my phone like going through social media and someone sent me a message and he was like hey th um this is the guy you gave your number to earlier the photo shoot is going to be the next day what 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 so i'm um, someone that is typically very careful like um so i started asking him questions like oh what's the photo shoot about where are we going to do it what and what and what so i just kept like um explaining like, like asking him questions and for some reason he started getting very irritated like about me asking him questions and i was like i'm sorry if you feel like um i'm asking too much questions i don't know you from anywhere and you just came you just located me and you are giving me this offer um so i have to be sure like of um what you are telling me and all that he was like no he's not irritated that but because he called a hotel that the photo shoot he said claimed that the photo shoot was supposed to be done in a hotel close to where i was staying and it's quite a popular hotel so um i was like yeah but still so he was like um you have to do my hair and my makeup and i was like i do hair if it's hair i know how to handle that um and also makeup i do my makeup i don't i don't see why i should stress going to do makeup so i was like is it okay for them if i do my makeup and i also do my hair and he was like yeah if you're not interested just let me know. i'm like yeah i'm not interested like because he was really 
irritated about me asking him those questions. So I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not interested. So he was like, okay. And that was where the, the chat ended. So fast forward to like three months, um, into like three months, two or three months later, um, I got a text message at night also still going through my phone. And in that picture was the picture of a girl, a lady. And the person was like, Hey, do you usher? And then like, this was like, Hey, good evening. Do you usher? So I was like, Hmm. Um, I was like, I asked, please, who is this? And the person was like, um, it's Sharon or I think it's Sharon. I forgot him, but it was like, the person was like, it's Sharon and all that. And okay. The way the message came, it was like, oh, they are paying 97,000, um, 96 or 97,000, um, shillings. Um, it's from 10 to what, what, what now. The reason why it wasn't so peculiar for me that this person just sent me a message is because anyone that knows me knows I do hair and like 70% of my contacts is not safe because those are just people that um, send me a message because they just want to make hair. So I do have a lot of people that have my number and a lot of unsaved numbers on my phone. So it wasn't like a very weird or um, peculiar situation for me to meet someone like for someone to send me a message and i don't have the person's number so but like i was like hey did, where did you get my number and the person was like oh you don't have my number i'm like no i don't have any the person was like are you are you serious and i'm like why would i like because i was already getting irritated so i was like why would i lie about not having your number so the person was like uh, um i think that was when the person said i'm sharon i mean i'm doing law in ucu so it was like this person knew do you understand knew me so i was like oh okay so the person was like yeah i have your number um uh, i know you're a student in ucu but we need people we need ushers that was what the person was telling me you need us we need ushers and because of the lockdown also she was like a lot of people a lot of my friends are out of are not available so i'm just trying to get whoever is available that is willing to just get like quick cash so she was like the uh, event is going to be at 10 to to one so i was like okay so we started talking she was explaining she was like you have palms you're supposed to wear like a black um pants or like a black skirt that the event is going to provide for something up so now where i started getting kind of um suspicious was when she 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 called the almost the exact same money that the other people had called previously so i was like okay um i had deleted his number I had dated the number like when I told them I wasn't interested. I dated the number because I didn't want, of course, I didn't want to be associated with those people anymore. But then I remember that on the day, um, because that, like I said, it was like two or three months back, so I couldn't really remember the date. But then I remember that on that day, just before they walked in, I took it. Me and my sister were like, they, I, I took a picture of me and my sister, sister just sitting outside. So I went back to my gallery and I checked that date, and then I went back to the call my contact to that date and i didn't see the number i saw the other number that i had spoken to at that night but it wasn't the same as the number that sent me so i was like okay then the next day in the month, because she was like oh the event is going to be um the next day which was also the same thing that the other person had told me like oh the event is going to be the next day so the next day i um i woke when i woke up in the morning i sent I went on Google map and I sent, I checked the name of the hotel because it was a different hotel. The hotel is like 20 or 30 minutes away from the other hotel, but it's also a very popular hotel. So, um, I went, I checked the hotel and then I actually got their number on Google map and called the reception center. And when I called the reception center, I, I actually spoke to a guy there and I was like, Hey, I just got a, a gig to be an usher in one of the events in your hotel, but I'm not sure of how true it is. So I, I just called you to um, confirm if there's any events going on, because like I said, it was with, during this lockdown period. And he was like, oh, yes, there is actually, they okay. were actually having three different events. So he was like, there's a possibility. But since I had not told him what exactly the event is, um, he couldn't really confirm or deny if there was an event similar to that. 
So he was like, okay, to help me, because he was about to leave and the next person was about to take over for him. So he was like, I'm leaving, but he gave me the name of the next person that is going to be at the reception. So he was like, when you come, you talk to this person so that at least he knows you are where you are and he knows you are safe and he can see you through everything. So I was like, okay, thank you. So since he had told me that there was an event and I was like, Oshin, I had done Oshin back home in Nigeria. And you guys, honestly speaking, they got me when I was like really broke, like, really really broke and um i think that just made me very vulnerable so i um i was like okay so at at that was like at 7 a.m that was as early as i called at 8 someone called me and the person was like hey are you the ocean like yeah he was like yes he's the manager for the event and he was like um they need me to come in at eight i'm like i'm sorry i can't come in at, at eight because the lady i spoke to earlier she told me that the event was supposed to be at 10 and she was like i should be there at 9 30. so she, she was like oh she made a mistake because your um she, she was like she made a mistake because you're supposed to go in and do your hair and makeup that was exactly what the other guy had said if you remember in the other um um the other two guys had said so the Things just kept adding up, but I wasn't really sure if they were um, the same or not. And then, like I said, I was in my head. I just kept saying, if this really works out, then like this is just a way for me to get money, like a shooting job. Maybe if they get gig once in a while, they can let me know. And if I'm available, I'll be able to do it. That was just my my thinking. So my sister, and also I um had spoken to my sister about so she was like yeah we're going to go with a border guy that we know so that he takes you there and he waits until when you give him the clear i was like okay so when we got um to when i when so i i waited for the border guy that was supposed to come and pick me and he, he was running a bit late so i spoke to the girl like the girl sent me a message, you know, the girl coming, he was like, where are you? I'm like, yeah, I'm on my way. I'm just waiting for the border guy that is coming to pick me. And he was like, why are you lying? What, 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 you're not on your, on your way. Then the other lady sent me a message and she was like, um, you said you were going to be here by this time. And the guy and the manager is not being frustrated. Like they're supposed to have started on makeup and the rest, but and you, but you're nowhere to be found. So I was like, oh, oh, um, I was like, um, no, I'm on my way. I don't really know where the place is. So I, I needed to get a judge that knows the place. And she was like, yeah, um, it's not far. Everybody knows all the uh, all the judge and border guy. They know the place. So you don't know what you're talking about. What, what, what. And then she was still just giving me the vibe of how that guy started getting irritated because I was asking him a lot of questions. So I was like, you know what? I'm not interested. Just um, you guys should just go ahead and do it with someone else. I can't work under this type of condition because I'm trying to explain things to you. And the person was like, oh, just she, the, that was when she like mellowed and she mellowed and she was like, oh, just come. It's too late. We can't um, we can't look for someone else. So just just come all the same. So and me, I was not feeling but like, OK, if this thing is true and they are already planned with me and all that and it doesn't work out i don't know where they will start from so let me just go and like just even then that wasn't like the border guy that was coming coming to pick me came and he picked me and we got there so i told i had explained everything to him so he was waiting for me so when we got to the hotel just in front of the hotel was like sorry beside the hotel was um a very a salon that was there so he was like we are going to be here this is where we are going to stay and you do your hair and you do everything so i was like okay so when we when we came in he greeted the woman and the woman spoke to me in luganda and i didn't understand what she was saying so he, she was like do you understand luganda i'm like i'm sorry madam i don't she was like oh okay that's sorry that she kept talking to me in luganda she even thought i was being rude but um she didn't know that i didn't know she was referring to me because it she wasn't the only one that was in the salon at that time my that was like about uh 10 9 30 a.m in the morning it was on a saturday so she was like okay uh, we're going to do your hair and do your makeup and then i was like okay so he had already spoken to her but he was speaking in luganda so i didn't really get what he was saying now mind you before immediately i dropped and um they called me uh, i called and i was like hey i'm um, around the 
the hotel the money the manager was like oh, okay I'll, I'll call i'll send someone to come pick you so the guy that came immediately he came he got a call so he picked the call and then he was like um he was talking he was speaking 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 in luganda and then he was like hey can you please help me and write a number on your phone for me that's and somebody's giving me a number he doesn't have a pain or anything like that i felt very uneasy about it because in nigeria had had similar experience where she went and somebody asked her for her phone because he wanted to make a call and he just disappeared she didn't see her phone again and so i was like okay i was like i just told myself in my mind that no matter what happens i'm not going to leave my phone with him like i'm going to make sure that the phone is constantly in my hands so which was what i did so i said okay give me the number and he called the number like he dialed the number he I, I i dialed the number on my phone and just kept it just in case he needed it another time so um when we got there after he had spoken to the woman he, and the person called and he was like oh yeah i don't know if it's mtn or airtel can i check and i'm like so he asked me oh can i check is the, this in mtn or airtel then i was like oh i didn't bother so i i checked so i noticed that when i i was showing him the number he was trying to get my phone um from me like he was trying to get snatch my phone from me like not snatch actually but just like hold it and, and but i wasn't allowing him like no you can just see it and then when you're done seeing it you give me the phone so he had done the same thing like three times like oh i forgot what the this is and i'm like that is that doesn't make sense you can't forget if a number is airtel or mtn 20 times like you can't keep forgetting and he kept asking me oh can i see the this and so what i did was like that i had a pen on my in my bag so i asked the lady that was making my hair and i was like hey please do you have um a pen and she was like and do you have a paper and she was like yes yeah, she does i'm like okay can you please help me with with it so i wrote the number for him and i kept it so i was like he can just have the number like on paper he, he doesn't have to keep looking at my phone and when he just saw this he got like there was this look of frustration on his face and immediately i just knew that this guy literally brought me all the way from my place just to come and steal my phone and so i knew that um when he had left so i had i started talking to the lady that was doing the makeup i was like hey how much does this cost and she was like oh um 20k but plus the hair um that's going to be like 30 on it all in all i spoke to the manager she was like yeah 30 so i called my sister and i was like this is what is happening and i think these people are trying to steal my phone i can't go anywhere with them even if because i have just confirmed like now being here i've confirmed that this thing is not legit and i can't go anywhere with them so can you send me money so that i i pay off these people and then i go from there and there was she was like okay so um sitting down and then like the lady asked me like hey is he coming back then i was like um did he tell you where he was going she was like no you're his girlfriend right that was what she asked and i'm like no i'm not she was like okay that is strange that because he told her that and his girlfriend we are going uh, going for an event i'm like no i'm not his girlfriend i was actually supposed to do an ushering job in that hotel what, what, what and the way she looked at me it was like oh like these people were trying to scam me but she didn't really say it outside so i was like um sh i was like don't worry i have your money with me i'm going to get it to you so she was like oh okay um thank you like she was like thank you so i was like i'll just go after this uh i tried calling the number just to be sure because like i just wanted to confirm in my head because they were still working on my hair and still doing the makeup and i was like well i'm paying for this i might as well just enjoy the process that was my thinking so i tried calling the number wasn't going through i went i checked the whatsapp machine that has been communicating with me and it was blocked guys so that was when i realized that not that was not where i realized but that was when i was like i confirmed my 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 feelings towards what was happening that yes chat we were almost um robbed and he never came back the paper he just left the paper with the number there and that was it he just left um immediately i was done with my makeup and everything fortunately for me i had enough money with me so i took uh border and went back to my hostel took a couple of pictures with my makeup because she did a good job and 
I th think it was like after two days that I started getting really angry at myself because I was asking myself, how could I, could I have been so foolish to fall for something like this so easily? You know, like you think you are very smart and you feel like, okay, things like that people can't get to you. But like, it's so easy, especially when people get you in a position that, you, like in a very vulnerable position and maybe you're in need of money or something and they, they were good, they're going because the first time, um, the first time I, they were, they came, the, they were putting on mask. They were not putting on mask. So I re remember their face, but the second time I had met the other guy, he, he had, a, he had a mask, mask on. So I didn't really know if it was them, but the face looked very familiar to me, but I wasn't sure. I couldn't place it if it were, if it was the same person or not. And also, he when I spoke to them and I was telling them that, hey, I don't know this number initially, like the guy was like, can you send a screenshot? And I felt the reason why he was he wanted him to he wanted me to send a screenshot was because they, he wanted to be sure if he had tried to scam me, tried to rob me before or not. If because he didn't want to put himself in in a situation where maybe I would have to talk to the police and then we when when we, when he's there we get him. But I'm fortunate that like, I'm just I'm grateful to God that nothing like that happened and i called my mom and she was so concerned and even angry about the whole situation but i'm just happy that i'm okay now and um i'm okay about it like mentally now i'm okay because i got angry at myself a lot over it so i just wanted like i said i wanted to just talk about this story for anyone that might experience anything like that outside just be careful you guys it's it's not worth it if it's not someone you trust if it's not something you are sure of and if somebody is not willing to really explain and give you um all the details that you need then don't just go for it because your life or even the little don't lose the little you have just because you're trying to get small <sighs> That's the lesson I have learned from this. I just felt I should share it with you guys. Let me know what you think about this video, guys. And also let me know if you've experienced something like that. I know that there are people that can have come out to tell me like similar stories of what they've experienced like, like mine. So just let me know in the comment section if you've experienced something like that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.